Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we embark upon this week that we've had uh, across the United States, I'm internally grateful that you, young person, are able to view this video today. Uh, some went to school this week hoping to get to the weekend and did not make it back to their homes. And that's something that is not lost on us as teens, teens who are going to school every day to get their education. Um, we wanna encourage you, we wanna continue to pray for you, bless you, lift you up, and say that it doesn't have to be like this. Uh, so we do, we do want to think about those families who are bereaved today, uh, particularly in the teen community. And so as we reflect on the goodness and the wonderfulness of God, a lot of us have been out of church school for quite a while. And so it is our hope to bring you some strong programming that you can tap into each week or each month, just so that you can stay connected to your power source. And we know that our power comes from the Lord. And no matter how far we feel out into the wilderness we may be, we must remember that God loves us. He wants us to be joyous and he wants us to do good by others. And so as it was stated, our lesson is going to come from Deuteronomy. And because time is of the essence and attention spans are short, we wanted to make sure to, at least I wanna make sure that you have the scriptures. So we're gonna start off with that. I'm gonna read it from two different verse uh, versions. Because again, as I've taught my students many times, you don't have to stick with one version. There's a multitude of versions of, uh, of the text in the Bible, and you wanna find the one that will speak to you that you can read easily, and then you can compare it to some of our favorites like the King James Version. So let's start with Deuteronomy uh, 5. And this is coming from King James Version. And Moses called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, O Lord, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that you may learn them and keep them and do them. Verse 2, the Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. The Lord made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive this day. So if you think about that for a moment, and then my text preferred version is the new century version. In verse five, uh, chapter five, verse one starts by saying, Moses called all the people of Israel together and said, listen, Israel, to the commands and law I am giving you today. Learn them and obey them carefully. The Lord our God made an agreement with us on Mount Sinai. He did not make this agreement with our ancestors, but he made it with us, with all of us who are alive here today. So if we look at that in terms of uh, some of those commandments, we, we think a lot about the 10 commandments and what we were charged with to do. And some of us think, wow, that's, that predates Microsoft, that predates uh, World War II, World War I, it predates many of the things that we think of as relevant in our lives. But what we need to recall is that God didn't make that covenant just for our ancestors. He made that covenant with each of us who are what was that key word? Put it in the chat if there's a chat. That key word was alive. Those of us who are alive today, it is our responsibility to honor that covenant that was made. So let's look at verses 10, uh, excuse me, let's look at chapter 10, and we'll start with verse 12. King James reads as follows. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee but to fear the Lord thy God? to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to 
keep commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. So that was verse uh, 12 and 13 in chapter 10. What I think is important there is how clear that direction is. Because we might ask ourselves, what does God want me to do? These times of difficultness where I feel disconnected from my friends, disconnected from my community, disconnected from my school, whether it's technology challenges or understanding the lesson that I have in front of me challenges, we want to make sure we remember these things. It says in verse 12 of chapter 10 in Deuteronomy, now Israel, this is what the Lord your God wants you to do. Well, hey, if I ask, what, do I, what am I supposed to do? It looks like God has said to us, this is what I want you to do. It says, now Israel, respect the Lord your God and do what he has told you to do. Love him. Serve the Lord your God with your whole being. Bring your whole being to him. And obey the Lord's commands and laws that I'm giving you today. It doesn't say for his good. Anyone know what it says? If you're looking and following along with the scriptures with me, it says for your own good, for thy good. So you're not following his commands because he needs you to. God is all powerful, all knowing, he's everywhere, but he's asking you to follow it for your own good. And that's where we get our strength. So if you are feeling a little bit weak or weary this week because of all of these things coming our way, if we're looking at the news, it doesn't matter if it's local or national or international, everywhere you look, there's something coming at us that requires us to remember our centering. And what is our center? Our center is God. And he tells us to love him, to serve him with our whole being. Brother Leon, I think it's a little bit like where if I had a phone and it had 32 gigabytes of data and I spent one gigabyte of data on God and then I had like 31 other gigabytes to do whatever I wanted. But God is saying, I want all 32 of those gigs all 32 of those gigabytes, we need to be serving him with our whole self. Now, it then goes on to verse, chapter 27, verses 1 through 10. And this is where we really get into the crux of the conversation. What we want you to remember here is that Moses was with, was with the elders of Israel And and Moses, with the elders of Israel, commanded the people, saying, keep all the commandments which I command you this day. So he just told us what to do in chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. And now Moses and the elders have commanded the people, saying, keep all the commandments which I command you this day. And it shall be on the day when ye shall pass over Jordan unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee that thou shalt set thee up great stones and plaster them with plaster. And thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law when thou art passed over, that thou mayest go in unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, a land that floweth with milk and honey, as the Lord God thy God fathers hath promised thee. Therefore shall be when you be gone over Jordan that you shall set up these stones which I command you this day in Mount Ebal, and thou shalt plaster them with plaster. Verse five, and there shalt thou build an altar unto the Lord thy God, an altar of stones, thou shalt not lift up any iron tool upon them. Thou shalt build the altar of the Lord thy God of whole stones, and thou shalt offer burnt offerings therein to the Lord thy God. And thou shalt offer peace offerings, and shalt eat there, and rejoice before the Lord thy God. And thou shalt write upon the stones all the words of this law very plainly. And Moses and the priests, the Levites, spake unto all Israel, saying, Take heed and hearken, O Israel, this day thou art to become the people of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt therefore obey the voice of the Lord thy God and do his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Now, I don't quite have enough time to read Deuteronomy 27, 1 through 10 in the New Century Version, but you're welcome to go and pick that up in your Bible Gateway app or whatever you might be utilizing. And again, that's verses 1 through 10 in chapter 27 of Deuteronomy. What I want to make sure to impress upon us is that the people of Israel, after having witnessed the 10 plagues, they witnessed God part the Red Sea. 
They escaped from an advancing army. They heard God's voice at Mount Sinai. They received commandments. They dined on food from heaven, and they drank water from a rock. And yet, they failed to believe that God could take them into the land he had promised them. They were fearful. They believed it was better to die in a wilderness than enter God's promised land. God gave them what they wanted, and instead of moving forward, they wandered in a wilderness for 40 years until unbelief died out and a new generation was at the threshold of actualizing God's promise. Are you the new generation actualizing God's promise? Or are you doubtful and fearful, thinking, hey, I'll just keep meandering and wandering through this wilderness instead of taking God's hand and saying, I trust you completely, Lord. So to wrap this up, I want you to write down two, three high-level points. Number one, a promise to everyone. Number two, a promise to live by. Number three, a promise to remember. And I want you to think about these three questions. What did Moses want his listeners to do with the message they heard? If you're digging into the scriptures, I would look between Deuteronomy 5, 1, and 3. What did Moses want his listeners to do with the message they heard? The second thing I want you to dig into is a promise to live by. Name the five requirements God expected from the people listening to Moses' speech. And finally, a promise to remember. Ponder this question, what does public display of the law mean for the common citizen? So we do have responsibilities being believers in God, but there are benefits that are unmatched. So we invite you to dig into your scriptures, to dig into the word, the gospel, and to tap in with the church. If you've got questions, if you've got concerns, we want to be there to support you.